Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about role play games and today we're going to be playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we got a not guilty verdict for Edgeworth. However, he jumped in and said that he thinks that he committed the murder that caused the DL6 incident way back in December of 2001. And so now we've got to defend him. Then I would like to resume our trial. Judge, Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examining. The statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? No, Your Honor. On Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth. I'm a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please, please. A DL6 incident. If I'm not mistaken, this will be our last piece of testimony for the series. And if you want to know why I'm doing only four cases, if you, if you haven't watched any of the previous videos for some reason, uh, go check down in the description. I'll explain why I'm only doing four cases for this series instead of five. Mm -hmm. Anyways, let's continue. The DL6 Incident That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake stu struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Hmm. And until now, you thought you this memory was a dream? We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out and I lost my memory of the events. Bah! The same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. So we'll just do what we normally do and press. What was the trial your father had involved in on that day? I don't remember things very clearly. Only two things. I know my father lost and Mr. Von Kama was the prosecuting attorney. Mr. Von Kama, you were handling that case? It was 15 years ago. I don't remember the details. That was when Edgeworth pointed out the problem with in Von Karma's evidence. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the, in the elevator. So there were three people, including yourself, trapped in that elevator? Yes, myself, my father, and Yanni Yogi. We were fine at first, but then as time passed, and no one came to help. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. What did you do then? I was a nine-year-old boy at the time. What could I do? I was scared, 
trembling in the corner. But then... Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the bailiff Yanni Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. And you perked it up. What happened next? I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But the air was getting so thick I panicked. So you're saying that you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was in a daze. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. The gun fired once? Yes. I think after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my head every day. That gunshot and that horrible scream. Scream? It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. To this day? Yes, I can practically hear it now. I doubt I will ever forget that scream as long as I live. There it is. One part of that testimony clearly contradicts the evidence. But I don't know what it means. I'd better find out, and quick. So the problem here is a moment later there was a gunshot, a single gunshot in a scream. However, if we're to look over at the DL6 case file, uh, the murder weapon was fired twice. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream, then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. But that doesn't make sense. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence, unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot, yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing, when the pistol was thrown. So who fired the remaining shot? Hmm, was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Hmm, I see, I see. You do have a point. Mr. Wright, the murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other sh fired, the, o the other shot fired, had something to do with the case? Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you proof. What? Impossible. Now, now, Mr. Von Karma, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to the incident? Look at this photograph. This, this is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. So let me get this straight. 
This photo proves two shots were fired. Where? Your Honor, please. Please get a clue. Show the judge the contradiction in the photo. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see. A bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol, yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. Oh, order, order. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart, the other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright, but who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary? That's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. That bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter. The whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that, that made the bullet hole in the door. Order. I will have order. Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly. That the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked this second bullet. So, all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. Disk, disk, disk. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Gah. How did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? I've been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? Sorry, Maya. What? I, it looks like I was wrong. Nick? The second bullet wasn't there, and all my conjectures are for nothing. N no. But you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Edgeworth declared innocent. I'm sorry. It just... When I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person. Someone else who fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick? Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? N no. No, I do not. So, you killed your father, but that was not your intention. Yes, I did. Oh no. He's confessing. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today. Right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I have been here before. It's just my, like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying. 
But my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Esther Wright. Your Honor. I... I object. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object, huh? Oof. Nick? I... I don't know. His case is perfect. Oh no. Grah. It must exist. The second bullet. What? What did you just say? Nothing. Second bullet must exist. But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. Huh? I, uh, the, the, the second bullet, it, uh, it exists. What? But we've just heard proof that it did not exist. Uh, I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. It's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The, 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 the murderer. The, the murderer. Then tell us. Just who is this murderer? I'm still thinking about that one. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet. Why would he? Huh? First of all, how would he have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for the bullet? Why would the murderer have spent the time to look for that stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? I... Uh, um... Bah! The murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Urgh. Had to take it. Had to take it? The murderer? What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright? Y yes Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But, uh, the murderer had to take that bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance what? Uh, maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer? The bullet hit the murderer. J just saying, for instance, I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't it? It's not like you could just perform surgery right there. Y you know? Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's what really happened? Let me get this straight. So, at the time of the murder, the murderer himself was shot, and he left with the second bullet still inside? thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime? Uh, yes, I guess that's how it would work, yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from the elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean the murderer came from outside, yes. The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol and it, at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges, and the bullet... The bullet goes through the, the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Hmm... Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney that I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it. Deny it. No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. That's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? 
I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of shock, but took it because he was injured? Which would mean... It could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma. Oh man, something wrong, Mr. Wright? You seem dazed. Uh, no, Your Honor. Well, you have indicated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Should I come out and say it now? Your Honor, there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? The, 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 the. Urgh, my hands are shaking. The what? Von Karma. Von Karma. You mean the Von Karma, the prosecutor, sitting right there? Bah. You, you don't object? <laughs> I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months after starting the day after the incident, yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident? Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Where did I under- Where did I go under the knife hat, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Urk. Nick! Let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Edgeworth? I know Von Karma. Perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. Ugh, nobody's that perfect. So, so what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out of himself? That's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere, but... Where? Disc, disc, disc. Well, Mr. Wright. Can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? Alright, Von Karma. I'll prove it. And I'll even use evidence. I know how you like it so much. What? The evidence that proves Von Karma was shot is... Von Karma's perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery, leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it unlikely that Von Karma performed surgery on himself. You... you don't mean... I do. There's the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. Is that even possible? For all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. Well, Von Karma? I'm going to run this over you and see what we find. I... refuse. You refuse? But refusing this means... You acknowledge the bullet is still inside you? Order, order, order. Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use this metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations runs out on this case today. It was you who said we had to end this right here, right now. 
Mm. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. It reacted. Something's inside his right shoulder. The bullet! Mr. Von Karma? You. It was you. I was afraid this would happen, and so I remained silent. Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. But, but, Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove. I have no obligation to prove anything. It is you who must prove something here, Mr. Wright. Not I. Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any of the DL6 evidence. It's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. Ooh. What? You were close. One day away from freedom. You see, I have proof. What? Who would have thought you would have dug your own grave by trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. That's... a bullet? Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings... You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired that bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Ron Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets, then if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun, the very same pistol, in other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. Mmph. Mmph. Mr. Ron Karma, you will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet and solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma? Mm.
Tisk, tisk, tisk. Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge. What? What? What are you doing? Do your job. Bring an end to this miserable charade. Now, end it. Very well. It appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty. That is all. The court is adjourned. December 28, 5.38 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Nick! Nick! We did it! Did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick! Crushed! I gotta say, I'm impressed! <laughs> It was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd had it. I know, I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now it's all just a good memory. It's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah? I... I'm not sure how to say this. I know, I know. Try thank you. I... I see. Thank you, Wright. You're welcome. I think you could have done. I think you could have done better than that. Oof. S sorry, I'm not good at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. Dear, dear. Whoop! Amazing, pal. You pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. Yeah, my salary went down to print this month, but who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth, you should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Hmm, I see. Hmm. <laughs> Whoop. I... I feel foolish. Don't worry. Take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Hey, y'all. Lotta. Y'all were great in there. Thank you. Yo, Edgeworth, congrats. Uh, thank y'all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you. You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there. You, you were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lotta? Who, me? Ah, I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? It's over, Nick. My life is over. Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick. I'm not long for this world. Uh, you don't look sick. It's Beyonce. She She's going to live in Paris. Paris, Nick. She's leaving me behind. Larry, Larry. Yo, Edgy, there you are. Um, yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here, a little gift for me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Harry Butts, you came al you come along tonight too. My treat, pal. Huh? Uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, yo, Nick. That's the suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's not police talk for prison food, right? Right? I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right. Yeah, what's up? That envelope that Larry gave me, it's got money in it. 
Well, yeah, that's not that strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? Huh, what a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. $38 exactly? Nick, wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? $38. No. No! Larry, it was you! What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day, 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored. He came into school anyway. Then, he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history. <laughs> Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know. Really, right? I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, huh? Edgeworth. Hmm? You should have told me. Now, now, Nick, it was 15 years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it. Uh, where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. Well, I'd call you a goody two-shoes to the extreme. Yeah, and you get worked up too easily, too. Death! The death sentence for both of you. And if only I'd known I'd have become a prosecutor. The same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth. Want to switch, right? Hi, y'all. Line up and take. I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time. Let's go. After that, dinner on me. Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom, although Edgeworth was still in detention. December 29th, 5.02 a.m., Wright & Co. Law Offices. Whoa, I went a little over overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh? Still only 5 o'clock. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Hmm? What's this? A letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you, it made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium, in training of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth too. I wanted to help you, but I couldn't. I was useless. So I've decided to go back to, to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. G goodbye What time is it? Gah! The first trains for the mountains have already left. To the station! I guess I'm too late. Hey! N Nick! Maya! So... You're leaving? Yeah. It's hard to be- It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And... I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? W wait! What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yes, only her voice, but still. I was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you.
Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. E evidence? Show Maya some evidence to cheer her up. A bullet? Von Karma was convinced he had taken all of the evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless. Uh, I don't know about that. So, bye. Bye. Thanks, Nick. And so my story ends. Time to turn a new page. And say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins. With the same old crazy cast of characters. Ha! Don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim. Uh, yes, your honor. Uh-oh. Got a bad feeling about this. And that was Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Now, an interesting thing about the credits of Ace Attorney games is it lets you talk to your favorite characters one last time. Hey, pal! Miss Edgeworth came down to the precinct to wish me Happy New Year. Talked about a pleasant surprise. Then he hung his head low and went right back outside. Kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? So yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of let the music play and then do the voices and then at the very end I'll go ahead and state my thoughts. Huh, Nick? Nah, haven't seen him lately. Who me? I've been working at a cheese shop. That Missy's a nice lady, but she's not exactly what you call a cheap date, huh? Oh, she's in Hawaii right now. Yeah. Who? Right? Yeah, I remember him. I hear he's been busy lately. You know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. Phoenix Wright. Hmm. Ah. The defense attorney for whom I wrote the affidavit for, yes. Oh, you should know, I've taken over management of the Gatewater Hotel recently. Should you be in the area, please stop by. Ahem! <laughs> oh, it's you. Phoenix Wright. Ah, yes, me as understudy, was it not? I wonder how he's doing. Haven't heard of him late. Ah, the days of my youth, like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Phoenix Wright? He an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star with a name like Phoenix. I'm pleased to announce the Pink Princess is a hit. I sure owe that Mr. Wright a great deal. Oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public eye till the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kids' dreams, you know. Uh, 
Oh, I got a letter from Maya the other day. It sounds like she caught a cold standing under a waterfall. I wanted to visit but didn't have the time so I sent her some pink princess trading cards. She says you can't buy them from where she is. What kind of place is she living at anyway? Right? Who's that? You want to talk? Let's talk Pink Princess. Alright. But, you know, I snuck into the studio the other day. And I saw her. The one inside the Pink Princess suit. Ugh, what a dog. It was kind of a shock for a boy my tender age. Yeah, I remember right, that lawyer guy. Huh, me? I'm in training to become a paranormal photographer. You know that picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's a ghost. For real. Now that's talent. I'm gonna be famous. That's the end of Phoenix Wright. Like I've said before a million times, there is a case five, but I won't be doing it. Check the description if you want to know why. So, this game is probably one of my favorite games of all time. It's not my absolute favorite. That's probably Super Mario Galaxy. But it's definitely, like, somewhere in my top ten. And also, in my top ten is Phoenix Wright 3, Trials and Tribulations. Which is very good, and I'll be doing that on the channel soon, after I do Phoenix Wright 2. And, of course, I'm going to be taking some breaks between this series and the other Phoenix Wright games that I'll be playing. But I will be playing them, and you can hold me to that. This game was just so fun to play on the channel. It's one of my... It's I'm pretty sure it's my longest series so far. And I'm probably running past 50 minutes now. I checked a bit earlier, uh, and there's a YouTube playlist length calculator, and it said that before this finale right now, that the series was 13 hours and 37 minutes long. And so after this, it's going to be over 14 hours long. And I just want to say thank you to anyone who's stuck around through this entire series. You mean a lot to me. And... People who are, you know, I'm just going to say, people who watch my videos, I'm extremely grateful for you. And if you've been around for a while, or if you have only been around for, a, like, this Let's Play, like, this is your first Let's Play that you've seen of me, thank you. Thank you for at least watching some of my videos, and... The viewer retention rate, like the lo the amount of time that people watch the videos for has been going up. And so if you are one of the people that like watches my videos all the way through or something like that, thank you a lot. Just thank you for anyone who watches my videos. Speaking of uh, people who might be new to my channel, because I was touching that on that a little bit earlier, if you like this... Uh, be excited for my Phoenix Wright 2 Let's Play sometime in the future. Be excited for my net next Let's Play, which will be... The first episode will be coming out in late August, after I've done... After I've posted all of the Phoenix Wright shorts, and I've posted the trailer for the upcoming Let's Play, of course, and then also in between the trailer and the Phoenix Wright shorts, I'm also going to be posting a Phoenix Wright the full series uh, video, which is basically just the entire Phoenix Wright Let's Play, except I cut out all of the unnecessary bits, like me pressing all of the witnesses and examining every detail. So, yeah. Thank you guys all for watching. And also, I forgot to mention earlier, if you're new here, 
Also, check out my Mother 1 Let's Play, because that's the Let's Play that I'm very proud of. This Let's Play, Phoenix Wright and My Mother Let's Play, are two of my favorite series that I've done, just because I'm glad about the amount of quality that went into each of them. Anyways, it's this video is almost an hour long, so I'm just going to quit my rambling and say thanks. For, thank you guys so much for watching. For the next Let's Play, I'll give you guys a bit of a hint. We'll be following the adventures of another blue guy with spiky hair. Bye-bye.